You're not, you're not falling asleep on me, are you? Let's try this one more time. Good evening, church. Good evening. Ah, much better. Okay, let me catch up on the slides here. Uh, we got to get to where we're at. Okay, this evening we are continuing in our, um, our series that we've been doing all through Advent. A subtle melody rings on. And this evening, I don't know if you know, how many of you knew Infant Lowly, Infant Holy? Put your hands up high because you're a proud few. Okay? That is probably out of our entire series. That's probably one of the most obscure of the songs that we're doing during this season. Uh, up to this point, we have examined the, the uh, themes of beauty and freedom and joy and peace. And this evening we're looking at the theme of hope. Have you ever thought about how often the word hope appears in Scripture? Uh, it, it, it appears over 80 times in the New Testament in the NIV translation alone. Now, one of my favorite uh, passages that talks about hope is Hebrews 11.1. 1. It combines the idea of faith and hope. It says faith is being sure of, of what we hope for and, and certain of what we do not see. Or as the New Living Translation says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Uh, as I said this week, the, the, the hymn, Infant Lowly, Infant Holy, that, that's, that's a pretty obscure hymn. But in it, the lyrics talk about Jesus, an infant who is both lowly and holy. It speaks of his bed being a manger, his nursery being a stable. It tells how, how the cattle were doing what cattle do in a stable without even realizing that the Lord of all was in their presence. It's that infant, lowly infant holy that we look to this evening as our source of hope. Now before we explore this and look into the text, would you bow with me in prayer as we, as we go to that infant, lowly infant holy. Dear Lord, dear Jesus, uh, this evening we think of you as that infant, lowly infant holy, but you are so much more to us than that Lord. As we come to these texts this evening, we ask for you to uh, give us understanding. Make what it is that you say to us this evening in your word clear to us. But then, Lord, give us more than just clarity of your word. Help us not just to understand it, but help it to sink into us. And help it to bring us that hope that we desperately seek for and look for in our world today. And we pray it in your name, in the name of the infant, lowly infant, holy, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our texts are going to be on the screen, or you can follow along in the Pew Bibles. Uh, our first one is from Isaiah chapter 11, 6 through 11. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat, the calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and a little child will lead them all. The cow will graze near the bear, the cub and the calf will lie down together, the lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in the nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. In that day, the heir to David's throne will be a banner of salvation to all the world. The nations will rally to him, and the land where he lives will be a glorious place. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to bring back the remnant of his people. Those who remain in Asia and northern Egypt and southern Egypt, Ethiopia and Elam, in Babylonia, Hamath, and all the distant coastlands. Our second scripture comes from the book of Luke chapter 2. And uh, 
This is, a, this is a familiar story. At the time, this is one we often hear at Christmas. We almost always read this at Christmas. At the time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That evening, that night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a host of others. The, the armies of heaven praising God and saying glory to God in the highest. And peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven... The shepherds said to each other, let's, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they, they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angels had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. Shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Now, our Isaiah text talks about a time that is not yet. There will come a day when the wolf will live with the lamb. There will come a day when the leopard and the goat Will, will coexist without fear of destruction. The cow with the bear, the lion with the calf and the yearling, a time when all of these peaceful animals will be led by a little child. It goes on, it says, the baby will play with deadly snakes. Nothing will hurt or destroy on God's holy mountain. The Messiah, the one who rules on David's throne, the Messiah will rule from David's throne. He himself will be a banner of salvation for the whole world. He'll draw all of his people to himself. And they'll be restored and they'll be renewed. Isaiah tells us that that's the plan. This is the rescue plan that God has in store. Earlier in this same chapter, Isaiah said, Out of the stump of David's family... Out of the, the stump of Jesse will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from that old root. This shoot, this, this new branch that Isaiah talks about is the Messiah. And Isaiah was predicting this some 600 years before the birth of Jesus. So this was a prediction that was 600 years in the making. And then we look at our Luke passage. Now, this is a bit of a review for those of you who are at our College First Weinbrenner service this past week. We talked about this scripture. We're going to talk a little bit more about it and continue on from there. Um, it's a familiar story to many of us. This is the Christmas story. An arduous road trip for Mary and Joseph. Difficult and long in the best of circumstances. But their road trip is aggravated by her late in-term pregnancy. Uh, it's a journey to an overcrowded city where there's, there's not enough of housing. It's a journey to that overcrowded city so that they can, engage, they can engage in a census. And typically a census meant you were going to have to pay more taxes. 
So this doesn't sound like a, a, a real great story. And then on top of that, the birth of her firstborn child and a son in a stable. And they had to lay him in, a, in an animal trough, a feed trough. And then the story goes on and it says that an angel, one angel, you know, we got we to be careful with this. We rush to the angel choir, but, but one angel shows up and he appears to the shepherds and it says the glory of God fills, fills the fields around them and they're terrified. And that angel announces good news. Not just good news to the shepherds, good news for all people, the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in the city of David. And then the angel says something that I thought was just maybe a little odd. You will recognize him this way. He's a baby. He's going to be wrapped up snugly in cloth and he's going to be lying in a manger. And then the angel is joined by an army of angels saying glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, to those whom God is pleased with. But I want to stop and I want to go back to that last statement before the angel armies joined in. If the Messiah was there, if the person that they had been looking for for 600 years had finally arrived, you would think maybe they would recognize him. Maybe they wouldn't need a sign. You would think that, that maybe he would come with fanfare. Maybe he would come with shouts of joy. I mean, they've been waiting for this guy for 600 years. But those 600 years have kind of changed their perception of what they were looking for. Because the Messiah didn't come as a warrior king. The Messiah didn't come in splendor and glory. He didn't come prepared to kick the Romans out of town. He didn't come with fanfare. He came, as our subtle melody reminds us, as a lowly yet holy infant. The angel said, this will be a sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. They needed a sign to help them identify the Savior. They needed a sign to help them identify the Messiah, the Lord. So we come back to our story. The angels exit, and the, the shepherds, uh, well, they decide they've got to check this good news out. They've got to go and see for themselves. So they rush off to Bethlehem, and they find things just as the angel had said to them. They found Mary, and they found Joseph, and they found this baby wrapped up in cloth and lying in a manger. And at that instant, I think they realized, wow, the Messiah is a baby. That's kind of odd. We've always thought he'd be, you know, a warrior king riding in on a white horse to rescue us. But he came as a baby, a lowly little baby. He couldn't feed himself. He couldn't dress himself. He couldn't even change his pants when they were wet. He couldn't communicate beyond a cry. This was the one who had come to rescue them? He couldn't even rescue himself. But he wasn't just a lowly infant. He was also a holy infant. I wish you could see my manuscript because I put holy in all capitals. He wasn't just a little holy or a lot holy. He was totally holy. This wasn't just any baby. This was God incarnate. This was God with skin on. He became human and he moved into the neighborhood. And this was just the beginning. This baby came to give us hope. This infant lowly, this infant holy, the song tells us is Lord of all. Not just a baby, but Lord of all. The Messiah. This infant lowly, infant holy was heralded 
with good news that he is the Messiah. The shepherds could not contain that good news. Look what it, look what it says. They told everyone. Have you ever had anything happen to you that was so amazing you just had to tell everyone you met? How many of you have seen my grandparent, my grandchildren pictures? Yeah, see that's the kind of, and I'm talking about amp that up a few degrees, you know, take it a little higher, you know? Uh, how many of you have seen pictures of my grandchildren in their Halloween costumes? Some more, of it. yeah, yeah. And, and, my daughter-in-law puts them on Facebook, and it, what is it that gets you so excited that it's such great news that you have to tell everyone? Well, for the shepherds, they met the Messiah. They saw the Messiah. They told everyone what had happened. Jesus is born. And they told everyone what the angel had said about this child. He is the Lord. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. This is good news for all people. And everyone that they told was astonished. The shepherds returned to their flocks, praising and glorifying God. They didn't just go back to the fields to their sheep. The whole way back, they were having a worship service. You get the picture here? They're praising God. They're glorifying God the whole way back to their flocks. They're doing that because of what they had seen and what they had heard and the fact that it was exactly the way the angel told them it would be. This child, this infant, lowly infant, holy, is the Lord of all and he was born for all. He was born to free us. Free us from our sin. Free us even from death. He is the Messiah who brings hope. The Messiah that came as a baby, though, wouldn't stay a baby, would he? He would grow. He would become a man. And this Messiah would bear the sin of all humanity on his shoulders. And he would die for that sin. He'd be separated from the Father because of that sin. And then after three days, he would rise again. But that was yet to happen. Remember the people in Isaiah's time were looking for a Messiah and we talked about how that text in Messiah is uh, that text in Isaiah is about things that haven't yet happened. Well, the shepherds saw the baby. They didn't see a crucified Jesus yet. They didn't see a risen Jesus yet. That was yet to happen. That was a future event for them. And that stuff that we talked about in Isaiah, when the lion and the lamb can lay down together, that's going to happen when that Messiah who came once as a baby comes a second time. That Messiah who died and rose again does come back as a conquering warrior. That Savior comes back to culminate all of history. And for us, that's a yet-to-happen event. That has not happened yet, but that's something that we look forward to. So just like the people in Isaiah's time, who had hope that a Messiah would come, and just like the shepherds who saw the Messiah, but didn't know what the, the culmination of his life would be, we also have that hope of what's yet to come. Just like the shepherds hope for a baby to grow up and become a king, we also hope for a Messiah who will come a second time. And we can all live in that hope. Hope that is brought by this Messiah, by this infant, lowly, infant, holy. Hope is an interesting word. You ever thought about it? I have, a, I have a quote that I found that I really, I found this years ago and I really like it. I'd like to share it with you. It's, by, it's from Reuben Alves. Uh, and I don't always agree with his theology, but I like what he had to say in this quote. Hope is hearing the melody of the future. And faith is dancing to that melody in the here and now. Remember when I said I like how Hebrews combines faith and hope together? I like the way this quote combines them together. Hope is hearing the melody of the future. But faith is dancing to that song in the here and now. We have a hope that comes from the Messiah, from Jesus, from our relationship with Him. 
And we're going to be with him someday. And we're going to be in eternity with him someday. But we have work to do here and now. We are called to live, to, to dance in the here and now. That's how we live out our faith. Hope is hearing the melody of the future. We hear the sweet songs of the throngs around the throne. We can imagine the, the, the song of a triumphant Jesus coming on a white horse to bring the final culmination of all of history. We hear the melody of the sweet by and by songs that we sing about walking on streets of gold. But we're also required to dance to that tune that we hear. Right here and right now. We need to live out the hope that we had. Hope doesn't just inform our future. It transforms our today. Can I get an amen up in here? Have you all fallen asleep? I'll preach longer if I need to. Give it to us? Okay, you all ask for it. <laughs> hope doesn't just inform our Future. It transforms our here and now. It gives us the song that we need to dance. It gives us the song that we need to hear. The beat, if you will, that allows us to dance to our faith. Jesus had come. And he's brought beauty, and he's brought freedom, and he's brought joy, and he's brought, brought peace, as we've talked about over the last four weeks. But Jesus also brings hope. Hope that changes everything. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for prophecies from long ago that still are our not yet. We thank you for prophecies that have been fulfilled. We thank you for a Messiah that has come, perhaps not as was expected, perhaps not as the conquering hero that they, that they looked for, but a Messiah who has come as an infant lowly, infant holy. Lord, we thank you for the fact that you were willing to set aside your godhood and to, to take on human form, become human in every way, even like a slave, and become obedient, even obedient to death on a cross. Lord, we thank you for the good news that was proclaimed on the evening of your birth. And we ask now that, that we can live in that hope. And as we hear that melody of the future, it won't just be a catchy tune that rattles around in our head, but it'll be a melody that causes us to live in a way that's different, that causes us to dance with you. And we pray it in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. As the band comes forward, uh, there was a, a, a kind of a challenge given in our four o'clock service. Uh, Beth said, you know, we, 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 we come to a Christmas Eve service and we talk about the baby in the manger. But the reality is Jesus wasn't born on Christmas Eve. He was born on Christmas Day. So when you leave tonight, the manger is still empty. The manger is still empty. We're still expecting something. We're still looking for something. So when we celebrate his birth tomorrow, as we celebrate the coming of the Messiah as a lowly, holy infant, think about what hope that brings. Think about what song that sings for you. And then dance. Would you all stand?